Gear later truck just dropped this off. Let's take a look at what we got here. Come on. Oh, yes! Come on, Tyler. Look at that. <laughs> that is awesome. Okay, so if you're watching the last episode, you know that I had to order one of these. This is called a, a grill denser. So it looks like a condenser, and it actually was functional in the 70s when they didn't have the air conditioning condenser up on the roof. They actually had it right in front of the, uh, in front of the radiator. So the grill that I had that came with the, uh, the hood from the 79 truck that I bought just had a uh, stamped steel grill. It just wasn't movie correct. So the guys at the Big Rig Chrome Shop, they have a product that they sell that's called a fake grill dancer, which is what this is. Oh man, that is so movie correct, it's not even funny. So of course, it's just a bunch of hollow pipes. It's not actually all plumbed together. That's why it's fake. You can't, can't actually use it as a, as a condenser. Well, I don't want to wreck it. But this is perfect for the look that I'm going for, for the snowman. That is beautiful. Oh, well, it looks like it got bent a little. I have to bend these back, but we can fix that. That is gonna look sharp. All right, let's start putting this hood together. this all goes together but it can't be that complicated I'm sure we'll figure it out You know, looking at it further, I'm thinking it might make more sense to actually build it on the hood. That way it'll hold it all together. So we'll peel off all the plastic on the stainless. Oh, I always love doing that. Beautiful. And I got some stainless steel carriage bolts that we need hold it in place. I figure those will look nice and then they won't rust. We'll just put a few in. And I'm pretty sure this might be the way to do it. Yeah, that is looking good. Yeah, that's definitely the way to do it, is to build it on the hood. Oh man, that's gonna look sharp. Okay, so we'll put the rest of the, the bolts in, it's at least hung. And then there's a, I'll gotta mount, obviously mount the grill bars. And then there's this last piece of stainless that goes along the bottom like that. But yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna be real nice. The thing I'm kind of annoyed about though, is they left a piece of tape on, so I gotta scrape this all out of here. You can see that there. So, not a big deal, but I'm kind of annoyed. It's actually, 
it's about 18 inches of tape that I got to scrape out of there. But other than that, I'm, I'm quite happy with it. There's times like this, I could really use a helper. So I just kind of threw the, the screws through and now, or the carriage bolts, and now I just need to put nuts on them. And then we'll just snug them up. Try and bring this all together. I think what's happening, because not all the holes lined up, so I think the fiberglass has kind of relaxed and went out a little, so it needs to be sucked in for all the holes to line up. But that is so awesome. Now, of course, I've been putting anti-seize on all these stainless bolts just to keep the, the threads from galling because I'm using a, a power impact here. Only a quarter inch, so it's not going to put that much power on it, but you can gall up these threads if you put too much uh, torque to them without anti-seize, and then you'll uh, you'll be cutting them off. So always a good practice to use a little anti-seize on there. And to the person who put this together and left this piece of tape on there when they were actually building this, I'd sure like to talk to you about your lack of quality control. I mean, clearly you would have seen this tape was on here when you were putting this together and you just decided to leave it. And now I got to scrape it out one little bit at a time. So thanks again. I really appreciate it. What are you doing? Oh, uh, she's all clean, sir. Okay, so I did discover that I need to order a few more parts for the hood before we can actually install it. So while we wait for those parts to come in, I decided to dive back into the airlines because that job still isn't finished yet. And I won't bore you with going one by one because you've seen me install these before. Same idea, just to replace the line cut a new one and and, uh, and bolt it on. So I've started installing the new brass and I'll just continue to grind away here and, and swap out all these old rotten lines. But one thing I did want to show was the anti-smoke valve, I like to call it. So the previous owner had this installed and I wanted to make sure that I reuse this. And the reason I call it an anti-smoke valve is because these Cummins are notorious for smoking when you first fire them up and they're not up to temperature. And normally you'd let it sit there inside your shop smoking yourself out while it builds enough air to release the brakes and allow you to drive it out. So what this does is this allows you to use shop air and fill up your tanks, your primary, your secondary, and your third, and get it to full air pressure before you even start the engine. That way, as soon as you start it, you can instantly turn, uh, hit the brakes and drive outside and, and you don't smoke out your shop. So I thought that was a pretty good idea. So we're gonna reuse that and I'll just have it sitting, plumbing into the, uh, into, the, into the sleeper bunk and there's a little access door. So this will just be laying there. So you can just open that door up, put your shop air on, air it up and drive it out of your shop. So anti-smoke valve, I thought that was a pretty good idea. Man, what a, what a time consuming job this has been. Pretty much eating up the whole day with airlines, but I got the front tank done and plumbed. The back tank got a couple more plugs to put in there. I've cleaned up all the old, all the old airlines and got them out of there. So it's getting, uh, it's getting real close now. It's been a heck of a job, but uh, thanks again to the fan who donated this Kenworth manual because this has been invaluable. Yeah, so getting close. Like I say, I got all the old lines out, got everything sorted. Uh, those, these are of course the fuel lines for the, for the primary fuel tank. So I'll get new, new, uh, new ones for those. But the airlines are pretty much done. There's a couple more to go here that I've uh, that I've marked out. Um, these ones are going to be for the either the fifth wheel or the diff lock. I'm not sure which is which. Once we air the truck up, I'll be able to sort that out. But unfortunately, I won't be able to finish today because I don't have the right fittings to go from this these flared ends to the uh, to the Fairview. So I'll have to get some more adapters. So back to fort gary but we're definitely getting close don't know if i want to do that uh job again but i guess i gotta do it one more time on the duke fun and games and i noticed there was a ton of comments saying that the lines weren't long enough to consider the uh 
the up and down movement of the suspension. And, you know, that's definitely a consideration. But these particular lines here are obviously, this length isn't going to change from the brake chamber to this T. The whole differential is going to float down. So these ones won't matter because that distance will never change. But if you look, there is about a, I don't know, four or five inch float before this would hit the stop. So this would go down or this would go up and the front would go down. I mean, obviously the reverse on the back. So what I do need to consider are the ones that are fixed to the frame when this drops down, are they long enough? And, you know, just to be safe, especially like this one here, I might just take this off and just get some new collars and a longer line and just have it maybe a bigger S. And then again, these ones longer as well to these T's just so it has full movement and it won't rip them out if I uh, if I really had the suspension articulated. So good tips. Thanks to the fans for that. And I'll go ahead and make that change. So one of the reasons I haven't mounted this hood back on the truck yet, well, the main reason is, is I haven't got my hood pull back. So last fall, I took the hood pull off the old hood and one of the fans offered, he said he does powder coating on the side. So he offered, if I sent it to him, to powder coat it gold and black, just like the movie truck, the 50th anniversary in the, of the 73 US built Kenworths. So he sent me a picture of it and it looks just beautiful. And he said he put it in the mail, but I have been waiting months for it. Every day I go to the mailbox with fingers crossed, hoping that it's there and it's still not there. So. Hopefully it arrives soon. I guess worst case, what I could do is buy another uh, another hood pull off of eBay or a wrecker and then see if a local shop can powder gold, gold and black. So I'll try and figure that out because there's just no way if this hood was on the truck, you wouldn't be able to reach those bolts and, and uh, properly bolt it on there. So we'll hold off installing the hood. But as I was studying the movie truck, I realized that uh, they had a unique uh, clearance light about two thirds of the way up on the uh, on the hood and it was a functional light because you could see it on at night it's not a reflector like the one that's down here hood like lead, and nerves like steel he's going up to glory riding 18 wheels. and it's a little larger so i think it's either a two and a half or three inch as opposed to the the one and three quarter or two inch uh, reflector so anyway i thought well let's get some lights which i did i got one of these which is the right size i believe and it's right in between looking at the movie truck it's right in between these two bolts it's right about there but it looks like it's just glued on there. And I was trying to figure out, I mean, there's no real way to, real good way to mount this. So I went to Lesco and they had uh, stainless steel rings, which of course isn't a hundred percent movie accurate, but I think that's actually gonna look pretty nice in there. You can bolt it in there and it'll hold it in place nice and solid. And the stainless will complement the stainless on the grill. So again, it's gonna be a tribute truck. It's not gonna be perfect, perfect. I'm trying my best, but I think that'll look, uh, that'll look all right. So what we'll do is we'll use a hole saw and we'll cut those holes out and we'll get these mounted and, uh, and wired up. There, how's that look? It's not bad. I was trying to look at pictures of the truck and it looked like it was about the width of this back from the edge. So that's what I was aiming for. That's why originally I had a three inch line and then I had to move it over to three and a half, but I think that'll work quite nice. Okay, so we'll drill three holes and screw it in there and then do the same thing on the other side. There we go. too bad I'm kind of digging that not perfect but not too bad so I was trying to mount the, the stainless strip at the bottom here and I noticed that this bar was just bent right up 
So I decided to take it off and we'll go ahead and heat it up and straighten it out in the garage. Some guys can turn it on a dime or turn it right downtown. But I need 40 acres to turn this rig around. He was driving down. Well, wasn't that nice? Mrs. Twin Sticks came out and she makes these bracelets on the side and she gave me a, a good luck bracelet to get my hood done today. All right, that's awesome of her. Love that woman. Okay, so now I got this thing straightened out and we just need to line it up. But uh, the reason I didn't tighten these bolts is because it's gonna be right in the way. So I gotta get these ones in, then I'll zip cut them off and then there'll be clearance for this bar. So this is sure a handy little tool. Works great in these tight spaces. Thanks again, Dad. Okay, I was finally able to get that, that bottom bar mounted. It took a lot of work. Doesn't look like it, but uh, it did. I was finally able to get it on there. I had to modify it a little. The holes weren't right quite in the right spots and I bent a few of the fins, but I can straighten those out. So it's on there now. And all that's left to finish it up is the is mounting the grill bars. So they'll go something like that. And then there's one center and then the two sides. And they're pretty simple. This is just a little slot and then there's screws from behind. So I'll have to ask one of my daughters or maybe Mrs. Twin Sticks to come out and help hold it while I put the screws in. And with that, all we really need to do now is, is get that hood pulled. So hopefully I haven't put that in the mailbox and it'll arrive soon and we can get that on there. All right, next, to close this out, I wanted to do a little bit of mail opening. I received this package from a, from a fan in Ontario. So let's open it up. I can't recall if he said he worked at an auto record or knew of an auto record, but he found something that he thought would be just perfect in snowman. Well, it was well packaged. I'll give you that. Oh, beauty. Look at that. Unreal. I love the box that he made. He must have put a lot of effort into that to make sure it got shipped. But that is an authentic, I think it's a 20 inch Kenworth steering wheel. Isn't that beautiful? All right, let's take a look at how good this is going to work in here. Oh, yeah. That is mint. That is going to replace it and be just perfect. Because you can see the old ones cracked and split all over the place. So thanks again, TDB. You're a minty dude. All right, and with that, we're going to wrap this episode up. Still a long way to go, but... We'll get there. Oh, and one more thing just came in the mail. And I am excited about this one. This is something that I have been hunting for out on the interwebs. And I finally found one on eBay. You're going to like this. <laughs> you know what this is? Oh, it's tough to open with one hand. Okay, let's see if we can get the plastic off. <laughs> Look at this. A Pace CV145. That is the exact one from the movie. Awesome. Well, it's truck, Jack, knife, turkey. <laughs> How cool is that? It even comes with the uh, with the original mic that Snowman was using. Check that out. <laughs> all right, so now we got the CV and we got the calculator. Now all I'm looking for is that uh, Pace Police Scanner, the 10-4U. If anyone out there knows where I can get one working or not, please send me a message on uh, twinstickgarage at gmail.com because that's the final piece of the puzzle but I am excited about this supposedly it works too sweet <laughs>